podcast starts now. <laughs> and let me just say, happy, happy Pride. Pride. Um, it's officially June, which is Pride Month. Yeah. You know, more than ever, it's yes. June. More than ever. Now, this time comes about once a year, June. It's usually once a year. Um, George, how are you celebrating? You know, this is tough because... You know, to give everyone a peek behind the curtain, it's currently May 31st. Oh, my So I God. don't feel proud yet. I hate and, when you give and everyone I have a peek to, behind the it curtain. It is so difficult to think 24 hours from now, not even, you know, 12 hours from now even, I will feel so proud. <laughs> I'm going to wake up fully erect, ready to take on the day, ready to buy some products, ready to RSVP to some Facebook events, potentially activations, launches, what have you, mm -hmm. ready to join a polycule, ready to welcome a third person into my uh, <laughs> polyamorous relationship, ready to book a trip to Fire Island, Mykonos, um, Ibiza, uh, wow. You know, what, yes, and I know Ibiza is sort of actually kind of straight coded, but when I go, it's going to be Pride Month themed. <laughs> and you won't let the straight codedness of Ibiza no, stop you from no, living no, no, no. as your true authentic self. It's going to be me at various parties. Pitbull is going to be DJing, and it's going to be all Instagram models. And then I'm going to walk in and say, "Who here has seen um, <clears throat> Weekend? That film, <laughs> <laughs> the Andrew Hay film Weekend?" And all of them are going to be like, "What?" Yeah. And I'm going to be like, that's what I thought, bitch. Yeah. And then I'm going to introduce them to queer cinema. You're going to be like, DJ, put this on. DJ, put this on, and it's going to be the film Weekend. It's going to be a <laughs> DVD of the film Weekend, and they're going to screen it for uh, a variety of Instagram influencers, models, etc. Wow, that would be so exciting. Yeah. So that's called grassroots organizing, and I do it during Pride Month and at no other time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really helpful. How are you celebrating Pride? <sighs> I just don't know if I am, to really? be completely honest. It, this is a tough year. It's, 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 I, I can't celebrate anything this year. Yeah. <laughs> I can't celebrate. Yeah. I feel... Because uh, you have a desk job. Because <laughs> essentially, <laughs> essentially, I feel like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a man at sea. Mm -hmm. I, I'm completely lost. Mm -hmm. um, you know, celebrating pride, it's sort of like, what? what uh, how about I have a home first? You know? I see what you're saying. But do you think... <laughs> Do you think you can't be prideful unless you have, you know, a nuclear family and home ownership? Because that actually, to me, goes against the <laughs> whole premise of pride. No, I don't need a nuclear family. I just don't know. Like, I think what I'm missing, actually, yeah. is that pride is something where you're like, okay, normally on my, like, let's say in the month of May, this is what I do. Yeah. This is normal. So June, I'm not doing that because I'm being abnormal this year. <laughs> I'm having pride I see. You're this having month. A, you're having a difficult uh, time being like, how can I change my habits? Yeah, it's like I don't have habits right now. Oh, you don't have habits right now. Yeah, I'm completely at at sea. Well, I mean, I have a job sure. that I go to every day, but outside of the job, what are my habits? Yeah, it's so interesting. You actually have the most stable, <laughs> maybe the most stable schedule you've ever had since I've known you. No. But for you, that is being at sea. <laughs> I'm actually more reckless than ever before. I'm completely lost. I yes, I have. I'm. I know where I am Monday uh -huh. through Friday. Yeah, between the hours that one works. Yeah, but other than that, you're having dinner, walking your dog. I'm completely at <laughs> sea, George. <laughs> I can't believe this. Okay. Um, and also like, to I think also the commitment of like when people celebrate Pride. Part of me is like, what are you talking? What do you mean? Like, what, define that for me. Yeah. And a lot of the the definition for a lot of people is like, well, I buy fourteen tickets to events and go to it. Yeah. And to me, I'm like, I don't like committing like that. No, I actually, uh, I felt like we had reached a very nice balance at some point where everyone decided, like, okay, we're to, uh, you know, fill in the blank, old, sophisticated, intellectual, <laughs> well read for pride. <laughs> and uh -huh. so I would say, you know, for the for uh, let's say 2015 through 2018 I was like, I don't care. I would never imagine going to a pride party. And then suddenly people got back into it and fully blown 38-year-old men were like, what are you doing for pride? And I was like, we're not in college. <laughs> I have to say, you grow up too fast. Oh my god! You grow Here up too fast. Again. Using 2015, you think you're over it? 2015, you were what 26? <laughs> <laughs> That's like the normal age to be like going. I guess out. what I mean is like we are so lucky that we live in these urban uh, cosmopolitan centers with a variety of LGBTQ plus people. 
I, Pride is every day for me. What is different about June? <laughs> I just... <laughs> It literally is just that you're overpaying. Not, I understand that this is a very sort of uh, basic first order critique that I'm making. I don't think I'm reinventing the wheel here. But like, mm -hmm. what is the point of a party being different in the month of June? Tell me. I, I just like, I, you know what it is, is yeah. that everyone's committed to having a little more fun. Like, oh, I think okay. it gives people an excuse to be like, OK, you know what? I'm going to be bad. Because I think so often, you know, let's say in the month of April, I keep going back a month. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I'm out, but ugh, it's it's 1 a.m. I should go home. Now you're out. It's 1 a.m. People see, are like, see. you're like, I should go. You know what? Actually, no, it's fucking fried. And I'm staying out till four <laughs> <laughs> because you know what? This means something. And I'm here with all my sisters and we did it. You know what you're describing actually is how I felt when booking this episode is I said, this isn't just any normal episode. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I agree. I just wanted to um, make a face, to be honest. <laughs> and I think our guest wanted to make a face as well because it was um, <laughs> oh, great face. <laughs> well, it was like a fun transition. Thank um, you. That added. It, I think it. I think what was funny to me about it was that it added a lot of weight to this episode. I agree. Well, I also. It is true that like, and in fact, actually, I have to say, our dear producer Olivia at some point emailed us and was like, "Do you have anything special planned for Pride?" And literally, my first reaction was like. No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> and then I had to reach inside myself and say, why are you rejecting your sense of childlike wonder? Why are you rejecting pride? Something our foremothers fought so hard for. Uh, you have such an urge to grow up. I do. It's true. Well, what? we've talked about this, you know, for so long, for all my 20s, I wanted to grow up. Now that I am a grown up, I'm like, I need to enter middle school. Yeah. You want to go back. I want to go back. I mean, that you're about to be the 38 year old gay guy being like, what are you doing for pride? OK, well, I have a few more years left. Thank you. But... I just I'm... <laughs> <laughs> not literally. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, we said we decided we remembered, you know, last year we started a new tradition, which is that for pride, we do an episode called Gaydio Lab, yeah. where rather than talking about a straight topic, we talk about a gay topic. And we, have to, we do it with basically a streeter lab all star, one could say. OK, someone who's been there from the beginning. Someone who's done multiple episodes, live shows, someone who I would say helped <laughs> helped define the spirit of the podcast and associated brand. Wow. Under the iHeartRadio umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So do you want to do the honors? Please give it up for Celeste Yim. Woo! Wow. Thank you. What's Hi. up? How are you guys? Really good. We are so good, actually. How on with you and Pride? Yeah, George. with me and Pride. Yeah. yeah, and Sam too. Mine's different. I'm remembering. What? Well, it does seem like What's we wrong? both have a tortured relationship with Pride this I year. No. Well, I just. Well, can't. here's what I. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Well, I'm just done. I can't live with abandon. I see what you're saying. Oh, here's here's my so issue cute. with Pride. Okay. Well, that's both your issues, kind of. Yeah, that we can't live with abandon. Reasons. Oh, please! I haven't lived with abandon since I was in the womb. <laughs> Since I was in the womb being you like, splash, splash, like, splash. As soon as I got out, I was like, where's my desk? Right. <laughs> You're like, get me a button up so, now. So here's the thing with Pride this year. And I'm going to try to work through this in real time. Okay. For so long, mm -hmm. the joke with Pride was, it's overly corporate. I'll meet you at the Chase Bank float. Yeah. Everyone yep. is marching, wearing their corporate tees, whatever. Mm -hmm. Last year, this thing happened where, because there was so much backlash with anti-trans legislation and with like people protesting, you know, Target's pride collection or whatever, suddenly even the corporate pride felt like important somehow. Do you the, do you relate to this at all? I, I hear what you're saying. Like, sure. like there's something where I was like, wait a minute, this thing that I've been making fun of for so long actually is like it literally is dangerous for Target to put out a pride collection <laughs> no, like, because people are going to come with a gun and protest yeah, suddenly. Yeah. And so that and on top of that, what happened last year and people may not remember is the sort of like LGBTQ plus creators and influencers didn't get gigs and work because people were doing fewer <laughs> and, pride yes. campaigns. Yeah. And suddenly I was like, wait a minute. Again, all these people that I've been making fun of, are they now being marginalized and should I be on the front lines advocating for Instagram influencers and Instagram creators to get that Brooklyn and campaign now the Brooklyn and is terrified of being seen as pro LGBT totally and so where are we now? so where are we now is what I'm right. saying yes it's really smart George 
Good job. Good job. I didn't think of that. And last year, I, I like actually kind of completely forgot that that happened. But you remember yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. Right? It was kind of shocking because you're used it to was every like, year. Backlash, backlash, backlash. Yes. You're used to every year suddenly you open Instagram and every random person you follow for some reason is partnering with the brand. Yeah. yeah. And suddenly that didn't happen last year. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 it's hard because it's like we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see. I think maybe this is a rebuilding year. Maybe this is like, maybe last year we were, um, it's a transitional period. It's a transitional period. Maybe this year we can build some new traditions. Um, yeah. Outside of brands. Outside of brands. It'll be hard. It will be hard. <laughs> I'm not seeing any, a lot of, you know, communal potlucks happening. Yeah. How Well, Celeste, we haven't uh, dug into your feelings. Yeah. How do you feel about Pride? Where are you at with Pride as a concept this year? Um, I missed Pride last year because I was traveling. Mm-hmm. Okay, Brack. With my girlfriend. Oh. Oh. Who I have one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of feel excited to be here this year. Um, but it's not feeling as like both like intense about like the parties, and it's not feeling as like I have to do some panels or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't really know like. I think we're going to have to see. Yeah. I, I love Pride. You do? I do, yeah. What do you like about it? I like that it's like everyone has to play yeah. ball. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. You yeah. know, like it's like birthday. You actually can't opt out. Exactly. Yeah. It's actually a lot like birthday. It's like, it's like, it's my birthday. I'm going to stay out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like we all have to gather because it only happens once a year and involves us all because we love Yay. you. <laughs> I, I think also it's it also has a thing. I love a communal day, like sure. in general. Of course. Sure. And like like for example, like I think the comparison is my parents are not like religious, mm -hmm. but like Easter comes and they're mm -hmm. like, Well, we're celebrating right. Easter well, we're out. doing something. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Um, and that's sort of my like relationship no, with fair. pride. I think. I also think like, okay, how do I put this? I think it's like what made pride so like delicious in the past few years. Like maybe before, yeah, I think before this year mm -hmm. was that it was like it harkened to with a time of like a monocultural celebration. Great point. Which was so rare. Yeah. And now monoculture is a little bit back. And I think it's making it less, like there's less of a craving yeah. for like something we're all doing. Do you know what I mean? Well, I actually, you know, the study of whether or not monoculture is back is approximately 90% of what both of us think about. So I do need <laughs> you to make your argument about why you think mo monoculture is coming You guys back. have different opinions about this? I think we have relatively uh, relatively the same. similar opinions about I it. I think there have been a few moments within the past, like Barbenheimer, nine or twelve months. Yes, starting maybe with Barbenheimer, but Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, even espresso, even mm, the yeah. eclipse, mm. yeah, even the Olympics coming. Well, so this is interesting because we were saying <laughs> that is actually an example of how <laughs> monoculture is not back because. Can you believe? How... I didn't like the feeling of me saying something and you guys both saying no. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you for the rest of the episode? No, I'm I didn't sorry. Like and it. I really and and by the way, I want to be on your side because no one is a bigger Olympic stand than me. I mean, it is literally my right. culture, of course. And I, we were at a we did our live show in Los Angeles last week. Shout out to the two awesome. of us. Awesome. Yeah, it was really awesome. That's cool. And yeah. one of the things we did for our famous segment based on your uh, copy, based on your trademark copyright issue there yet was the Olympics. Olympics and there, every yeah. single person in the room was like, "Wait, what? Why?" <gasps> they were like, "It's in Paris this year." It's in like, Paris. Oh, when, it, wait, when it's is this it? summer. And we were like, I was, I, in fact, no, was that's... like, yeah, it's starting in like a couple of weeks. And people were like, no, I don't. And I was you one know of the people what? that didn't know. That's true. Like you I are not hearing about. I keep up the Olympics and people keep being like, where exactly. is it? it I had no it's idea. The Olympics is becoming Paris. like the Oscars. It, like, right. you know how the Oscars is fully. And by the way, the Met Gala this year also did not feel monocultural. That's right. It literally felt like something. But that's, I guess, what I'm saying about pride. Like. <laughs> okay, you're. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowing this, but you're switching hear me, it up. Hear in a me, hear me, hear me. No, no, no. Hear me. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like because there 
are other things that are satiating us yes. to all talk to like our parents and our friends and our teachers, mm-hmm. teachers about yes. if the regular things aren't feeling oh like I they're see. making a big splash so you're saying because of the monocultural <laughs> impact of espresso barbenheimer <laughs> and the eclipse yeah. the met gala and, and the, olympics the olympics are less and, monocult- pride. and pride are less monocultural print it <laughs> <laughs> what else so you're What's wait wrong? Okay, hold on what? i think this is genius <laughs> okay i think, I think i'm but, making a lot of but sense you're saying, <laughs> we but, are being well fed monoculture wise <laughs> exactly so, so we don't need to eat more. so there's less pressure on pride to be monoculture that's what you're saying and we can make it our own is that not that there's less pressure just that there's less like we don't need it as bad I it's see. like when you have a lot of vacation time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. And then exactly. like you exactly. don't need to like if you're like on vacation for a month, you don't need to like party every night. You right. Be like, well, I'm I've got enough time. No, exactly. Yeah. You should talk more about vacation in this shirt. <laughs> oh my god, you are so you're vacation. So vacation yeah. And actually kind of white shirt is kind of vacation to me. That's true. Oh my god, really? Me, I'm in Midtown with my shirt. I feel like this no, is so midtown. I feel like okay. you're in Berlin. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, (laughs) my dream, of course, is to be able to be one of those fashionable gay men that is wearing the simplest possible outfit. Of course. And yet you look like you're in head to toe. Of course. You're pretty close to that, though. I do think, I think I maybe need different shoes, but I think like a crisp Oxford shirt, jeans. I think you're like a basics legend. (laughs) Yeah, I would agree with that. (laughs) Who am I talking like that? Like, what is happening? No, it's okay. No, I think you're a basics legend. You're you're pretty much a basics legend. That was like a splash of water in the face to me, (laughs) from me. (laughs) Like, hello? (laughs) You can I mean, you do have, you take fashion risks, but when you're at your most blazer, you are basics legends. Exactly. Yeah. I feel really understood right now. <laughs> Not like before. Can I ask something? How happened. many blazers do you own? You can't just ask someone that. <laughs> I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> Five or six? Okay. Because I've many. always wondered, is it that you have one and it's your signature? Right. Or is it that there are a few and there there's very subtle differences? I like to vary it up, but I like to look the same all the time. <laughs> I, that's, again, I don't my want dream. someone to see me and think, oh, you know when you're wearing something that you don't normally wear and then people like are complimenting it and you're like, you're... You're offending me. Yeah. Well, you, I know that what you're feeling is that I'm looking different. Exactly. And so you're saying I like your sweater. Exactly. I don't like that. <laughs> no, I actually have reached a point where I think all compliments are insults. They're just notices. They're you, notices. It should be a, you should be able to notice something more easily in our culture. Uh, but can, how much would it hurt for someone to be like, hey, I'm noticing your sweater? No, exactly. That would be miserable. Like, you're wearing a shirt that I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I See, I have a different approach, obviously. To what? Uh, clothes. Okay. Uh, if you want to be a basic legend, I feel like I want to mm-hmm. always be like, oh, you think I can't do that? I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think I can't? Oh, I can do that. <laughs> I really love to be like. Don't say to me that you can, I can't do that because I'm I'm doing it right now. <laughs> well, but you, I mean, your entire fashion. Uh oh, uh, oh, what's up? This your, could hurt. No, your your don't. entire fashion outlook is basically reclaiming various elements of Americana, <laughs> oh, and that can that's be true. that can that's be anything true. from cowboy. That's so true. It can be cowboy. It can be schoolboy. It can be Midwestern dad. It can be like you know, construction worker, but it is various different forms of American masculinity. And you are waking up every day and you're saying, which of them am I going to interrogate? No, that's you're true. You're our American boy. I do love to do that. I can't help it. I've gotten so addicted to Western stuff since I mean, being in LA. Really? Sam was wearing these cowboy boots and he told me I bought cowboy boots. I said, all right, I'll believe it when I see it. I, these are like some of the best cowboy boots I've ever seen. I mean, I would love to see that. I would love to see you wearing those. I I almost wore them to New York, but I said that's going to take up so much space. Yeah, that's fine. You have to at that point you would have to wear them on the plane. Then suddenly you're the person taking off cowboy boots to put them through the thing. They're like, is he right wing? When you take, whenever you take off cowboy boots, yeah, it it implies so much because it's really like like I was at these um like my parents' friend's house and I like took off my cowboy boots and I was immediately like, oh, I'm a little boy. Like, I, they think I'm a little boy. They think I, like, got bonked on the head, and I think I'm because a little boy. Because of the boy. motion? There's, like, they're just yeah, so Yeah, you have to take them off, like, skate. It's like, very, like, yeah. like, a cartoon of, like, short man wearing boots, and then he like, takes them off, and he's cartoonishly shorter. He's, like, a <laughs> foot shorter after taking off the boots. Of course. Like, it really changes who you are. Can I say yeah. something about cowboy boots? I actually think 
I do not feel safe enough to reclaim cowboy boots in any way. Like to me, they are still a symbol of like the George W. Bush administration. Well, that's exactly what Sam's fashion like MO is. Yes, because you're saying, you think oh, I you think... Do... You can't think I can't wear cowboy boots? <laughs> you think I can't do that? Oh, I see. I can it. do that. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. That Sometimes it backfires, but every once in a while. Huh. <laughs> you think I can't do that? <laughs> I can do that. That should be the Feeling title of your so memoir. Good you think I can't say. do that? Question mark. I, I can, can do, do that. that. Period. <laughs> The feeling that I'm having saying those words is like eating a candy. Yeah. Mm. I can't do that. I can do that. (laughs) I had another thing recently that I didn't think was weird. Um, I was eating with uh, Claire Mm O'Kane recently and I was like, I'll have a cold brew. And um, Claire was like, oh, I don't see cold brew on the menu. And I was like, I didn't see it anywhere. I just said it. Like, that's so crazy. And I was like, that's not crazy. It's a restaurant. I'm sure they'll have it. Did they? <laughs> they did. Of course. <laughs> Do you ever order off menu at restaurants? Go. Of course not. No. I would I would rather literally like rip out my shirt and perform a satanic ritual in the middle of Le Cirque right. than order than be like, can I just have two sliced tomatoes with some EVOO on top? Uh, oh, no. For oh, food, I would never, no. ever. For drinks, I'm like, there are people that do. <laughs> Don't try to be with us. <laughs> <laughs> if you're with us, you're with us. But if you're not, it's okay. I didn't no, see but it. this I is actually. It. But but I do I agree that we're, for it. drinks, I'm like, if there's a bar, you should be able to make anything I ask for. I am yeah. not looking at. T- to me, there is no, <laughs> there is no bigger <laughs> defeat than looking at a cocktail menu. Mm. Like, have a sense of self, right, and know what you want and totally. trust your gut. Right. Yeah. Do not order the, you know, red hot fire emoji. You know what mm-hmm. I wish, actually? I wish they would hand you the, they'd be like, and here's our cocktail menu. It has some amazing yeah. options. You open it and it just says like, lorem, ipsum, lorem, ipsum, lorem, ipsum. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I get that they want to hand you something, but it's sort of like, right. whatever. Do your best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, they should, they, uh, next time they hand me one, I'm going to rip <laughs> rip it into tiny pieces and throw it out. <laughs> and that's the polite thing to do. <laughs> that's the polite thing to do. That's what they do in France. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god! What is it? What is it again? I didn't see it. I just. Said I didn't it. see it. I just. Said That's it. amazing, Sam. <laughs> That's he, another great title. Yes. Yeah, that one really. I was like, it, it, sometimes you know when you're reflected back, you're like, whoa, of I course. didn't realize. It's kind of the origin of you think I can't do that. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. I just said it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Huh. Um, should we do our first segment? I almost want to just get it out of the way so we can like get into the meat. Of what things. are seg- what are the segments again? I wonder. You're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one since we're doing this is our very special Pride episode, so it is oh, Gadio Lab. Yeah. Um, so um, we're going to do our famous Gadio Lab segment, Gay Shooters. <laughs> Oh, yes. That's oh, right. right. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. It's a twist on the famous segment, Straight Shooters. Straight shooters of course. Um, yeah. By the way, I. I knew that the entire time and wrote those with I, that, and wrote mine with that in I, mind, of I, course. <laughs> of course, I knew that as well. Um, I'm so proud of you guys. Oh, We've done so many episodes. We actually have done infinity episodes. You've we just so reached, we, we're the first podcast to do infinity episodes. Yes. It actually is kind of crazy because in my mind, I'm still like, we're just getting started. It's yeah. like, we've done this since. It's been like four yeah. years. Yes, I was on, I think, in 2004. 2004. 2004 you were on pre pandemic. Yes. Yeah, you were on pre pandemic. And I was thinking on my commute over here that I remember the commute to the first episode being very long. Yeah, it was like in the middle of Bushwick. Bushwick. And once again, took me kind of a bit to get here. (laughs) Respect to you. I mean, to go from Bushwick to Midtown is the ultimate uh, hero's journey. Well, well, I mean, that was there's honey. That was my commute. Lights in this room. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Blinding, you know? one, could, one could argue. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> well, yes. And well, yes. you have done so many episodes, and I just am proud, like legit. Thank you, and I was looking at the episodes, and I was like, they have truly done so, so many since many. I was here. So many. So, so many. <laughs> and even trying to come up with a topic, one could say was impossible. Yeah. Oh, wow. Which kind of brought me to my... Well, I will say one. you're... Yeah. 
I respect that it was impossible. Of course. I respect that it was impossible, but you are, in fact, only the second guest to ever do a gay topic. Right. (laughs) So there's not that many. I wasn't really thinking that. that. No, I was more going, what should I talk about? Even one thing. Yeah, totally. And that's actually, we'll get into it. Well, I also do want to say a little bit, um, you know, I appreciate uh, you saying you're proud of us. There's some things about saying for doing so many episodes, it sounds a little bit like (laughs) I'm noticing your shirt. (laughs) Yeah, I do think there, it's not sort of the there has been, been there's been no good. value judgment whatsoever. You're like, I and I said it took me a long time. time both yeah, times. there's just a lot of episodes, and yeah, no one can right. argue with the amount of time that has been spent on this. Okay, you want me to try again? <laughs> no, no, I, I think, think you've said enough, <laughs> and I think it's time to do our first segment, gay shit. I think you should go. Okay. So, Celeste, in this segment, we test your familiarity with and complicity in gay culture (laughs) by asking you a series of rapid fire questions where you have to choose this thing or this other thing. Sam, take it away. Okay. Neil Patrick Harris or Michael Patrick King? Neil. Guilty on 34 counts or milking an herbivore cow? (laughs) (laughs) Cow. (laughs) Okay. The mark of the beast or the mark that you met at the feast? The mark that you met at the feast. (laughs) Mean girls or bean dip? <laughs> bean dip, obviously. Um, having a rich cultural heritage or having a rich father who doesn't give a shit. Oh, damn! That's this good. segment has changed since I was here. <laughs> no, it's like rapping no, it's now. Much, it's it, I do remember in the beginning we would do like maybe one silly one, but then the rest would literally be like blue or black. <laughs> right, right. Whereas now but all of them are But also each psychotic. of these are like gorgeous like wordplay. Well, we've, you know, we've uh, put we put in our, a lot of time. 10,000 hours. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Shout out to Malcolm. Shout can out I to get, Malcolm. Can I get yours again, Sam? Um, yeah, it was having a rich cultural heritage uh-huh. or having a rich father who doesn't give a shit. <laughs> rich father who doesn't give a shit. Totally. The Pope is homophobic or I hope it isn't COVID. The Pope is homophobic. <laughs> okay. Praying to God or blowing your wad? Oh, that's good. Praying to God. Cavatelli with broccoli rob and sausage or Donatella Versace is a boss bitch? <laughs> Donatella Versace is a boss bitch. <laughs> wow. That was really good. No, that was amazing. Um, I th- What do you think Celeste got? Well, I'm try- I was trying to remember... Do we, for Gadio Lab, change the meter from zero to 1,000 doves to something else? Maybe we go zero to <laughs> negative 1,000, uh, uh, you know, buttholes <laughs> and and so, and kind of go into a more the queer art of failure. So the less the less of a oh. score you have, the, the lower score you have, the better you did. Wow. Or something along those lines. Sure. Well, in that case, in that case, I think you got negative nine hundred twenty-seven mm-hmm. buttholes. Out of how many again? <laughs> negative one thousand. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty pretty good. That's pretty. <laughs> this podcast has really changed since I was last year. What are the changes? Yeah, what are the changes you're don't noticing? Don't remember a score. I mean, obviously, we <laughs> you don't remember the scores when they no, no, no. First step, we. Came up with the score like sort of as we went. Certainly, the score was, um, you know, canonized by the time you did your second appearance, but not when you recorded it. You it's know, possible. because Chromatica hadn't come out yet. Exactly. It's it's zero to one thousand doves normally. <laughs> Can you believe I was on post? I pre pre Chromatica, one of the rare pre Chromatica guests. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is wild, actually. And you I'm, were, uh, yeah. First live show we ever did uh, issue there yet. Right. Hmm. Wow. How awesome. have you changed? <laughs> yeah, how have you changed? You look really different. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of work done, huh? Yeah. Just my nose. <laughs> I think I... Yeah, you got a nose inserted <laughs> yeah. in the back of your head. Before your I face only was had flat. One. Before your face was flat. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I have one on the front and the back. <laughs> <laughs> We should do more characters. I lot. agree. Uh, no, what would your debut character be? Um, Mr. Gringo. <laughs> oh, I love that one. That's one of your classic characters. Yeah, That's I what love got that me guy. on SNL. Yeah, so. exactly. They said, great character. We're going to make them a writer. <laughs> You've shown that you can do development and premise work really well. Yeah, that's what matters. With that Mr. Is Gringer what matters Bean. in this industry, in this town, in this town, this town. Scratching over the mic. 
So that was so cartoonish. <laughs> That's part of Mr. Gringer Beans. Oh, I could feel, like I could it. feel some Mr. Gringer, Gringer Beans is the name. <laughs> Careful <laughs> making fun of me because it might I be am one not... of your recurring segments for the whole podcast for the rest of Can time. You please describe <laughs> what are Mr. Gringer Bean's qualities as a character? Yes, I guess the way I came up with it was I couldn't think of one single word or last yeah, name. You yeah. said Gringer Bean. So that's Gringer part of his story. Yeah. He doesn't know. Who well, he you, is. He for he anyone watching at home, you sort of did an exaggerated uh, scratch face scratch. So maybe part of Mr. Gringer Bean is like these little. <laughs> What? No, keep going. I'm, I'm these little I'm things. Liking. These little things everyone does. Mm -hmm. uh, nice li little gestures, exaggerated. okay? Yes. Little right. gestures, crossing your legs, <laughs> clapping, snapping your fingers. Rubbing your eyes. Rubbing your eyes. Base exactly. Oh. <laughs> it's literally, it is someone who in all other ways is normal. Has Don't an clip this, by the way. No, this is a clip. <laughs> this is the clip and it's going viral. Please. Please. Don't say don't clip this. We're in the middle of clipping. <laughs> This is currently on Instagram. So Mr. That's Gringer, why I'm saying actually, it. I want, <laughs> That's why I'm saying it. You can't, you can't stop us. We need, I want people to do front face and camera work where they do their impression <laughs> of Mr. Gringer Beans. And here it is. It is someone living their normal life. And then they have to make some small gesture and exaggerate it cartoonishly to the point <laughs> Sam, you where do. it's so funny. Go okay. Ahead. So this is uh, Mr. Gringer Beans. <laughs> <laughs> when um, he wants you to like, uh, he, you said something, but it was a little too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Mr. Gringer Beans where he's uh, in a panel discussion uh, post film screening and he just is going to cross his legs. And so then I thought, <laughs> oh, whoa! Oh. Damn, Mr. Go with that. <laughs> Mr. Gringer Beans shows whole. <laughs> Mr. Gringer Beans is flexible. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know that would make such an impact. It was really good. Uh, yeah. Mr. Well, this is another element of Mr. Gringer Beans is that he has a really active sex life. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, well, yes. And can you imagine how he has sex? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, it's wild. It, it takes forever. <laughs> it's literally like his arms and legs are in knots by the end of it. <laughs> okay, Celeste, it's your turn for clipping this. Um, this is Mr. Gringer Beans when a little bit of hair is um, bothering him okay. on his face. <laughs> that's good damn this is good he's yeah. amazing um, yeah it's so sad that SNL is on height <laughs> <laughs> I know his trust that you would be seeing Mr. Gringer being yeah. on update played by Bowen yeah that would be huge <laughs> um do you guys remember that show? Was it like the Fosse show with oh, Michelle Williams? Yeah, yes, yes. When she and did exactly when she, she did, did exactly Mr. Gringer right. Beans. Uh, Wait, yes, that was <laughs> where she goes. She <laughs> <laughs> you know who else is so Mr. Gringer Beans? <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw. Sometimes, like Carrie Brad Bradshaw, literally just walking on the street, and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, Carrie knocking on the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, you just don't get it. Giving Even when she gets Mr. splashed, it's like, like <laughs> yeah, she splashed, she's like, oh, 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 oh. full marionette. Like, think, she's literally the first marionette. Every limb is connected <laughs> the, with a string. The first woman marionette who's the star of her own show. <laughs> this is crazy. What's weird about this is that from now on, whenever someone's like being a little overly expressive, I'll refer to it as being a little yeah, Mr. Gringer Mr. Gringer Beans. Beans. <laughs> <laughs> Great, that was Gringer Beans. That was Gringer Beans. And even in like, you know, in theater or in film, like when a performance is so Mr. Gringer Beans. Yeah. Oh. You know who's so Mr. Gringer Beans? <laughs> Uma Thurman. 100 Uma Thurman is, so, and you know who else? Kerry Washington. Oh, totally. Can I, can I try to think of one? Um, I mean, the most obvious one is Nicolas Cage. I think Nicolas you're, Cage. You're, there's so many coming to you. Sorry, yeah, you're ahead, really good ahead, at this. Go Hmm. Zendaya. You think you Zendaya, Zendaya is Gringer Beans? I invented so Gringer Beans. I do Beans is my thing. I do not. Wait, you I think actually, Zendaya is Gringer Beans. Because to me, Zendaya is, is almost could use a little more Gringer Beans. No offense, of course. Uh, no, As I said that as a fan. Oh, I'm a huge fan. I think I if Mr. Her. Gringer Beans gave her a little training and said, you know, maybe in moments of real dramatic tension... Let's go a little more Gringer Beans. Yeah. I'm too scared of a clip to say more okay. about Zendaya. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But DM me. And I'll <laughs> to tell find you out why. why Zendaya is Gringer Beans. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 
Um, I decide what Gringer Beans is. That who. is fair. That's yes. <laughs> and who that's the is one not. addendum. It's like there's a definition of Gringer Beans, but then it's also but and like, also whatever Celeste yeah, decides. Text me. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of a single actor. Trump. <laughs> Trump is I'm, Gringer Beans. I can't believe you, you, sorry, you guys are having a lot of difficulty coming up. No, You're like I, a I, Gringer Beans scholar. The thing, the thing is, I'm so, this is something I need to like work on with a therapist what? is trying to recall any single actor. Of course. Because as soon as someone's like, what actor could do this? I'm like, uh, 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 I'm very like, I didn't do the reading. Like, oh. I know actors, but for yeah. some reason, it's as so soon scary. as someone is like, well, name one. I'm like, uh, Mr. Gringer Beans. <laughs> 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 what are you trying to say about Gringer Beans? So that's like a no. I know that you wrote that like over months. Like I know that that was yeah. hard. You wrote it for not it. everyone when we just... when you did the packet to do the show. <laughs> that was what we really responded what... to. And so that's I'm contractually obliged to bring it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, okay. I well, do that think got me. I would love to get into the gay topic. <laughs> yeah, I think we in should. celebration I, of Pride. Th- yeah, I think that would be amazing. I mean, I hate to. There is a part of me that wants to keep talking about Mr. Green Rubens because I kind of want him to have like a specific look so that people can dress as him for Halloween. Of course. But we'll we can, come back. We can come back to it. We can come back mm-hmm. to it. And actually, maybe his look can even incorporate your topic. So I bet Celeste, it will. <laughs> what is your gay topic that you brought today? And maybe a little on what makes it gay for you. Of course. So I know it's pride at the time of listening. Needless to say. <laughs> it's pride. It's pride. <laughs> And I know that a lot of podcast guests for the gay episode of Stradio Lab, they would bring in poppers. <laughs> they would bring in loud music. Yeah. Um, sex. Mm, sure. Um, dinner parties. <laughs> Ex jealousy. Mm. Oh, yeah. I thought I'm not going to do that. I'm going to dig deep. And I'm going to definitely not just be trying to think of one single topic to talk about. Mm. I am going to bring in something that I think much like many other topics on the podcast are unexpected for the task. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Just think it's important to let them cook. (laughs) Just it feels like they're stalling. Remember when I brought in Mr. Gringer Beans? (laughs) I just don't miss the mind that brought you Mr. Gringer Beans. And you're going to say, oh, they're going long? It just feels like you're like waiting for like maybe to run out the clock. Like maybe. Right. Like if I keep talking long enough, I can just leave. Yeah. Because George has a hard out, if I remember correctly. So. He does. (laughs) My topic is umbrella. Okay. So tell us why you think that's gay. Umbrellas are made for when it's raining. (laughs) Well, that is true. So they're already special. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. They are made for. A a type of day, yeah. That actually, in most cases, comes with wind, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. comes with lightning, yep. and these are impossible circumstances for an umbrella to work within. I ta- yes yes umbrellas are lying to themselves. Talk They're about the art of failure. Like so yes, it leads me to believe that umbrellas are are not here for what they're stated to be here for. Yes. And they're actually here to look gorgeous. <laughs> oh. So in the umbrella metaphor, mm-hmm. okay, in the umbrella metaphor, what they're here for is like to have a nuclear family, to get married, <laughs> to have procreative sex. But instead they're like, um, actually watch me twirl. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you don't think I can do that? I, I can, can do, do that. that. <laughs> oh, interesting. That I, is so interesting. I love that. Like, it, it is really about them failing to do the thing insane. they were. They're insane. Failing to do the thing they were put on the earth to do while also being so... Also, the ornamental element of it, like, the fake... You're pretending that this is functional, but it's actually just stunning. It's completely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I Like, love I totally that. get why when they got to the design they got to, they yes. were like... That's, it's done. Yeah, that's pretty much it. People will buy this, you know. <laughs> well, it's also so, you know, bayon. It's very like Janelle Monet, electric lady. Well, it's dramatic. It's dramatic. It is futurist. It is. Yeah. It is. You have a like it's honestly a little steampunk. Very <laughs> For steampunk. For sure. <laughs> but steampunk. also like 
um, <laughs> renaissance. <laughs> like Beyonce renaissance? Yeah, she uh, would totally be carrying an umbrella. It's it it exists across like it can I can picture it anywhere. Yes. Yeah. Also, you know what else it is? Speaking of Bob Fosse, it's very having an umbrella and doing a little dance. I mean, it's fair. made for choreo. It's made for choreo. Actually, that's actually what it's made for. <laughs> exactly. What was I made for? That's the umbrella when she realizes she twirl. was made for choreo. Of course. Because yeah. okay. it's such a fun extension. Yes, and it's like exactly. a little, I think the implication that it's practical makes it work so well in choreo. Exactly. Because you're like, oh, I didn't, oh, well, I thought that was for mm-hmm. work. And you're like, nope, it's yes. for play. And also, by the way, it is so impractical and that is what also makes it queer because talk about where do you even put it like if you don't have a bag you have to just be carrying it around if you do have a bag what you're going to put a wet (laughs) nylon tarp inside your bag where your copy of you know emma klein's the guest is that you're reading for the summer (laughs) i literally just picked up i just picked up emma klein's the guest (laughs) i just picked it up oh and and now i have now it's fucking wet now it's fucking wet (laughs) Great. Well, this I'm never supporting I'm any bookstore never again. Supporting a bookstore again, it's let alone women pepper. writing books. It's damp. It's it's, a, damp. it's water that never escapes the bag. Never. The bag just remains wet if you never. put an umbrella in there. I okay. An umbrella to me is like I think the line to itself. It's very like it, the umbrella is like waking up and having like a big to do list and being like I'm gonna get this done today. And then it's like you're gonna get three things done. Oh, if oh. you don't think the umbrella has ADHD, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> ADHD the umbrella is neurodivergent. <laughs> the, umbrella is, the umbrella is literally neurodivergent queen. Down. Yes. <laughs> Down. <laughs> okay, the, okay, the other thing about it, I do think there's something so... The way that umbrellas are always lost. Like, right, yeah. that's the other thing. That's like, there's something that's, it's like every gay movie where it's like, has this deep sadness mm-hmm. <laughs> inevitably. Mm-hmm. It's built in and it's like, an umbrella is meant to be, you are, it will make you sad. And yes. it's like, like a gay friend, you don't know really how it got to you. <laughs> but when you have it, it's yours. Yeah. And then, you can leave it somewhere and never see it. It's communal. It's communal. It's communal. It's promiscuous. Right. It's promiscuous. Yes. Oh, it's passed around like the town bicycle. It's impossible to keep one. Oh, mm-hmm. you, yes. and you, so, I mean, it's pretty anti-capitalist. You cannot own an umbrella. You can't own an umbrella. It you owns itself. Rent. Yeah. It can also range in like value and price. I mean, like nothing else. I, I will say the range, the golf umbrellas, though, that's very... Republican. I agree. Golf umbrellas is like they're, tr- they're really big and very like well made. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That I mean, is like, we can't afford those. That is no. the that is the like gay CEO. It's, like that is the umbrella that wants to. It's Pete Buttigieg. Right. But I almost think there's something interesting about Pete Buttigieg because, of course, he started out as gay CEO. But because he was made secretary of transportation, which is kind of the gayest position you can have. I'm almost like. It doesn't work anymore to use him as the go-to example of like neoliberal gay guy. Because I'm sort of like, there's something about what he's doing that is actually so (laughs) like perfume genius. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, this is sort of, he's like the perfume genius of being a a gay sellout. (laughs) This is like a brand new, I've never heard this take in my life. Like this is something. Don't you think? Pete is perfume. There is really something genius about this. Like if he had succeeded, that would have been a different story. But like he's what, Biden's little bitch and he has to like go fix the trains? Wait, I love this. You're being amazing right now. Yeah, this is, I needed to hear this. (laughs) (laughs) Like I actually don't think Pete is golf umbrella. I think Pete is, you know what I think Pete is? It's like an umbrella that has the logo of a big company. A hotel, maybe. Uh, or a hotel. Yeah. But that was given for free, and the quality is actually it's not the, very good. I think it's like, well, you ha- that's your umbrella that you have. Yes, Yeah. exactly. It's like Hilton honors, Hilton rewards program umbrella that you got because you stayed at your 50th Hilton, and then that was sent to you along with the candle. Wow. Yeah. Can I that's, talk about something else? Yes. Please. The Great little... transition, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'm Thank bored. you. <laughs> it was um, green or bean yeah. style. Can I talk about something else now? <laughs> 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 little tiny umbrella that comes in a drink. 
Oh. Also, oh my God. don't work no good. Talk about don't work no good. Don't work no not good. be working don't, at all good. Don't work, not be working, but works better than it should. Exactly. It's also like a decoration. I'm sorry. When it comes to literally the, its job, which is being fabulous, it's getting <laughs> tens across the board. I mean, the fact that they make them to open and close they can actually, open it, it's amazing. It's insane. <laughs> but Why then, do they make them like that? But they're that? immediately broken. <laughs> they come broken. They, they come, come broken. They still work. They don't stay though. Because they have, you know, they have that, that tiny elastic yes. that keeps it up. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, like, you're like four sips in. You're like, where'd the elastic go? Yeah. And now it doesn't stay <laughs> up. It's crazy. Even the the aesthetic, like, oh, my God. I'm so no, overwhelmed. Please. No, go. Even the aesthetic replication of the real umbrella. Yeah. M m like, matches. Yes. The original, like, <laughs> function and intent which is that it doesn't work it looks gorgeous yeah period <laughs> <laughs> when those things stop being able to open and close the little drink umbrellas that's when you know society has fallen yes mm. like there will be in our lives like stupid plastic ones that just are fake they and stay, stay open, open. No. And, and no and that will that, I, uh, no. that's like when i'll go republican that will i'll be like so this country upset. used to mean something you're bringing up republican <laughs> i do bring it up a lot we, we both bring it up a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's a worry of yours? I think that it's sort of like... <laughs> it's just something that it's like... It's a respectable way to be like, we don't want to make jokes about like suicide. It's like uh, you would be like, oh, I'm going to kill myself if that happens. But yeah. like our version of that is being like, I'm going to become a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think <laughs> that's such? That's really funny. Yeah, like it's kind of the a tide safe has way. turned on. I'm gonna kill myself. In what no, way? I know. In what way? True. You mean like now that it's okay to say it? Now it's okay. No, to say I'm it. saying it's like now it's, it's not okay. It's to say not it. okay now. Oh wow! Oh, so the tide turned. I'm saying it's like way, way, way overused. I see. I see. I see. Like, it used to be kind of like an inflammatory thing an to edgy. say, an edgy thing to say. No, it's not. And that would like like be a guaranteed laugh. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yes. And now yes. it's a bit like, why are you saying that? Yeah, yeah. I know there is something about specificity. Where for a while I thought maybe the way around that would was being like walk into the ocean, jump for off sure. a window. I say jump off, off a, a cliff. Bridge, still jump off a cliff, but I it does. I think no it's over. That. It's over. It's over. People do. People jump do off that. Cliff. Don't erase Sam. them. They've been through so much already. <laughs> well, <laughs> they jumped off a cliff for Christ's sakes. It's over for me. <laughs> It's but over. all respect. Yeah. Of course. You, my new thing that mm -hmm. I've been saying that could be a, maybe a segment if you guys yes, want. Please. Yeah, please. Is um, all respect to everyone who's ever lived. Oh. Uh, and it's mostly when I'm about to say something mean. I do yeah. that. Well, I always say. All respect. I always to say. To everyone who ever lived. To everyone who ever lived. Everyone who has ever lived That's and will so live. Respectful of you. But that person's being a bitch. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I it's always useful. say um, I useful. say this with love. I would say that's one of my signature <laughs> phrases. You say this with love. But I say you're this not. with love, but well, I guess like I want to, my like respect to be true. It's like, listen, everyone's on their own. Yeah, yeah. Life path. But I also think I say it with love. I mean it semi earnestly because it's like sometimes pointing out someone's flaw is the purest expression of love <laughs> because it means you see them for who they are. I was thinking today, I, I was bringing myself to tears thinking about how much I like critique. <laughs> <laughs> bringing myself to tears. Myself to tears. <laughs> getting yourself there. I was getting Wait, myself there. Yeah. Well, I was just like, what well, is critique? Like, we're all watching and consuming things. Yes. And it's like, but you experience it in your own head and you're like, okay. I felt this way about it. I wonder if there's anyone who feels similarly mm -hmm. and put that into words. Right. I love consuming critiques yeah. that are like nuanced <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like, you know, like, but accurate. Like when they hit something that is like, oh, that's it. I wish I could have put that into words. I'm like, I love a good critique. I mean, of course, that's why it's so <laughs> like intellectually dishonest to be like, oh, critics, like, why don't you make something if you're if you're such a critic? It's like, well, maybe criticism is making something. It completely It's literally is, making ideas, which is harder than making it's, an it's umbrella. like trying to measure how close or far you are to something else. Yes. Yeah. And uh, obviously, there are, as there are bad artists, there are bad uh, critics. That's, I think, the issue, is yeah. we need to be more honest about the fact <laughs> that there are good critics and bad critics, because mm -hmm. I think what ends up happening is you put all of them in one box. It's like me waking up and being like, all filmmakers are bad because I just saw the idea of you. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. That's not fair. 
I'm, I'm still stuck on bringing myself to tears. <laughs> That's Mr. Gringer's. <laughs> that is actually what is Gringer the name? Gringer Beans. That, Mr. Gringer Beans <laughs> is youth having like sort of like yes. a, a oh. normal thought and crying <laughs> because of it. I was really or, like, or getting yourself to cry <laughs> yeah. about something. It was no, a, I love that. A very emotional. Oh, no, but I, I you know. Yeah. yeah. I do you want to do about, an act out of bringing yourself to tears? Oh, I think I was literally like in the Chipotle at 11, 15 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes sometimes I, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I bring myself to tears when I think about my relationship with Sam. And I'm like, we've been through so much together. Oh my and God, that's so It still cute. is only getting deeper and I'm still excited to talk and critique with him every single time we it's see It's true. Him. It's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. The distance you do is have tough. A special... The distance is tough. We've learned though to occasionally text each other I miss you which is huge for <laughs> yeah. us because we used to be bad at checking in. difficult but, well not, not just that but also I think both of us struggle with being earnest and with like straightforwardly being like I miss you it's really true. yeah yeah I don't I feel that you two like are like my special guys for that <laughs> like I'm not relating to you guys not being able to do that because every time I see you both it's like hi sweetie hi sweetie well yeah yeah but don't so. you think there's a sort of okay? How do I phrase this? <clears throat> I love when you're, you've been doing <clears throat> some expert throat clearing today, and I know it's for like a practical reason. But I find you is it gringer beans? <laughs> <laughs> is my throat clearing gringer? Beans? It might be gringer beans. I'm sorry. It really no. I like I gringer beans is a beloved of course it's character. A beloved character. <laughs> It's a compliment. <laughs> it's a compliment. Know that. If someone says it's Gringer Beans, it's good. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know what I was about to say. There's a sort of uh, counterintuitive things that happens when you're so close with someone, it becomes more difficult to express yeah. that intimacy because... It's a given. Because it's a given and because when you express it, it feels forced or it feels um, contrived. Mm -hmm. It's almost like imagine, you know what it is? It's like imagine watching Casablanca and and then having to rate it on Letterboxd. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes. It's so self-evidently a masterpiece mm -hmm. that it is so beside the point to be like, hmm, five stars. <laughs> I found the characters interesting. Exactly. Uh -huh. And yeah. so in the same way, when someone is, you know, like a sister to you and then you and then you're like, hey, by the way, don't forget, I love you. It's right. like, OK, well, <laughs> Celeste, you're good at expressing your emotions. Thank you. And that's all I have to say about that. OK, bye. <laughs> 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 I think I agree with what you're saying yeah. practically. I always think it's nice. I agree. Yeah. I, I ultimately agree. And I ultimately <laughs> always appreciate when someone does express their emotions. And yeah, I think you're too. good at it. Thank you, Celeste. Yeah. Sweetie. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> you know what else about Granger Beans? <laughs> yes. And thank you for bringing it back. It is the perfect. It's it's actually so Granger Beans being a good thing. Yeah. Is the solution to there not being a nice way to say noticing your shirt. It, yes. yes. It's like someone's doing something big, like someone's using more steps than they have to. Gringer beans. You're being gringer beans. You're being gringer beans. But that's but with I love love. That. I that's say with this love. with love. I say this with love. You're being gringer beans. <laughs> gringer beans is all respect to everyone <laughs> yeah. who's ever lived. Because it's not good or bad. No, it's I would argue it's good. No, it is good. That's what I'm saying. Gringer beans is synonymous with good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. <laughs> It's a type of good. It's a big good. Yeah. Like, you can still notice someone's shirt if you don't like it. You can still say, I'm noticing your shirt. But if you are noticing it and it's big and you like it, you say, that it's shirt is so green. Exactly. Beans. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Because I'm thinking. We're so connected yeah, today. I can feel that. <laughs> okay. I hesitate to complicate this because I think we're having no, no, such an amazing, okay. such an amazing I'm moment of agreement. I'm open to it. I feel pretty, like, secure. Yeah. yeah I feel, beans, I feel so. no of course. But I'm just thinking, like, okay, let's go back to my throat clearing. What if I, I understand that. <laughs> Uh, at the level that I was doing it, it was adorable. It was incredible. It was. I, I I seemed so. And we ease. love you. But what if I? What if it really reached a point where it was so gringer beans that it was like disrupting the <laughs> podcast? But, or what if, for instance, <laughs> going back to you know Uma Thurman, Kerry Washington, sometimes their gringer beans is actually 
negatively affecting. I knew that that's the that's what the calculus was yes. in your head. Yes. But I think also those are like girls you love. You love them because they're finger <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, because yeah. I, I saw you doing the math, no, of, like, know, but I, I had know. said all those people are Granger Beans. Yes. Well, but I that also, was like legit to, with I, love. I also literally said Trump was Granger Beans. So, you know, it is tough. Well, <laughs> it's tough. Maybe I do love it. I mean, he's using Granger There's Beans something. for evil. He's using Granger Beans for evil. Of course, right. you can use Granger Beans for evil. I mean, you can use anything for evil. Yeah. Uh, that's like charm. That's so deep. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can use anything for, anything evil? for evil. I think Let's you say. can. What can you not use for? Well, I guess you can't. I'm, for instance, a very obvious point, but it's like you can use philanthropy for evil. Yeah, but y'all already know there's but one thing you can't use for evil. Love. Yeah. Do you think? Uh, let's let's think. Let's think. Well, I think, I think you, can you can definitely manipulate love and use it for evil. Like if you are. But that's not love, girl. <laughs> <laughs> That long that's pause. not love. That's your book title. But that's, <laughs> that's not, not love, love. Dot dot dot. Girl. L O L. Okay. I mean, this is. I don't All even right. think we have enough time right now. But like, is it true <laughs> that when you use love for evil, it stops becoming love? Yes. Uh, no. You think so? I don't think so. I think like, let's uh, say no. you're a mother and you love your daughter, <laughs> and separately, you're committing crimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you blame it on her? No. Let's say like Gypsy Rose? Yeah. yeah. Well, like okay, hold on. That well, but I do think that's not love maybe. You think did you think mother gypsy loved daughter gypsy? They're both named Gypsy? No, I just I just, <laughs> I just don't know their names. Don't bring up don't confuse him. <laughs> don't He's already confuse, lost. They're both named gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I think that's maybe something we have to throw out to the listeners. I feel really confident. You really feel confident. Really? I get it. I, no, you know what I actually appreciate about you? Mm -hmm. You have very clearly defined morality. Hmm. People say that to me a lot. Yeah, well, it's, but I, it's true. I wonder what that's coming from, because I don't know if that's true. You don't think that's true? I think I have like a regular sense of what I think is right and wrong. Well, I think the but fact- But I wonder if it's because I'm like being like randomly like too opinionated sometimes or something. That people think that. Oh, well, like you're think, vocal about it. Yeah. yeah but something. I also think you're, I... you thinking it's regular <laughs> is like part of it not being regular. <laughs> like you have such right. a strong sense of morality that you can't imagine anyone not having that strong sense of morality. Right. So you're like, well, I'm regular. Right. Not Again, like I kind see... of been feeling like that's coming from like me being stubborn or something. But maybe I have to like be practicing more love. But don't you think me. being stubborn, you can be stubborn and have bad morality. I know I'm just saying like maybe like I just always wonder what that's what's being picked up on from me. I see that I people see. think I see. that I see. But love you respect. And so many <laughs> people have your exact morality, but they're not as like in your face about it is what you're saying. Yeah. Like I just I'm like, they're not as people think you're gringer beans in morality. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Don't you think I mean, going back to going back to morality, the gringer beans me. Role, <laughs> being good it's like Hello? going to a protest is gringer beansing morality it's like it's like god forbid you have a private thought you're going out and you're holding a sign <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like oh i woke up today and i was like i believe in equality i have to be as loud about it as possible well this is why th are, would you say jan <laughs> six protesters were <laughs> they were gringer using beans gringer beans for, for evil. evil yes that was classic gringer beans <laughs> did you guys pass the rat today <laughs> on the way to oh, here. Oh no 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 no! Like the, the big uh, inflatable rat. Oh, rat. No no no! I didn't no. see. I didn't see her. That rat should be named Gringer. Beans. That's Gringer Beans. <laughs> That's Gringer Beans. <laughs> Love her, by the way. Love her. Of course, of course. she's a legend. Scabby, Scabby the rat. Scabby the rat. Um. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been an amazing time to have a thought, but it just didn't happen. No, 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 okay. no I wonder we'll what we're going to go, gonna go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connect every sentence. In post, this is going to sound like, you know, oh. all in with Chris Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no I have a one, uh, an umbrella-based question. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I, I actually would love about to that. go back to umbrellas. Yeah, me too. How do you two treat your umbrellas? Mm. I treat them like... Mm, it's it's like a conversation or something. It's like I it's not I don't own one, but I can have one when I'm with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so intangible to me. Yeah. yeah, like it's not like I like don't ever know where one is. Yeah, 
don't ever remember like if I brought one, mm-hmm. but if I need one, it like it's there. You know what I think is, what is essentially like identical in form, function, and spirit to an umbrella? Chapstick. <gasps> it is something that does not do what it's meant to do very well. That's it is true. something that you literally always lose. No one has ever finished a tube of chapstick. It is something that you always have with you somehow except for the one time you need it. Mm-hmm. It is something that's like cheap enough where it's you sort of like don't care. No one's ever like, oh God, I lost my chapstick because I'll have to save up <laughs> next month. And you're calling in something queer. And, and exactly, it's something queer. I mean, the idea of chapstick is literally the definition of camp is you're putting lipstick on, but it's not adding color. <laughs> yes, and a chapstick lesbian. Of course. Of course. What would an umbrella gay be? An umbrella gay? <laughs> an umbrella like gay. Like if someone, if you're like, oh, he's such an umbrella gay, yeah. what does that mean? Okay, yeah. this could be a couple things. Okay. Yeah, let's I could think. see it being like almost like a dapper gay. Exactly, yeah. Like it's sort of like I wear wool pants and yes. like fetishize London. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what's mm-hmm. the word? Uh, I could see it kind of being tech gay. Yeah. Where it's like, I have like, my pants are yeah. moisture wicking. and I could also see it being like, lost my phone and wallet gay. Yeah. Like, where's my phone? Where's my wallet? <laughs> and a girl. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And he, and his umbrella is like <laughs> decrepit. It's like half of it is fully gone. Uh-huh. One of the things is like poking a woman in the eye as he's walking. Uh-huh. I mean, I never feel more like, star of a movie than when I have a cheap umbrella and it's fully busted and, fully and flying busted. in the wind. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm this is the beginning of my movie. Like, down on my luck. But what's amazing about an umbrella is like even the cheapest, most broken one and like and the most expensive good one mm-hmm. like gives you this they they give you the same experience. Yes. Like you're great. getting wet. You're getting, you're getting a you're holding you're a getting, big thing. You're getting some wet. An umbrella gay. An umbrella gay. It also, okay, this is maybe, I can't tell this is gay or straight about it, actually, but walking with a friend, starts pouring rain, there's one umbrella, suddenly right. you're a couple. It this doesn't is, matter this what your actually, relationship is, but some, you are a couple. This is actually something I would love to <laughs> talk about, which is, and I think it relates to what you're saying, the use of umbrella as a metaphor, meaning under the blank uh-huh, umbrella. Uh-huh. Now, here's the issue with that. Definitionally, if two people are under, if multiple people are under an umbrella, it does not actually cover them and it sort of fucks everyone over. So to say such and such is under the LGBTQ plus umbrella is almost being like, watch out, your rights are under attack. <laughs> like it the is. umbrella is not going to protect you, bitch. Right. All your shoulders are getting wet. All your shoulders are You're getting wet. You're in the place that the umbrella puts the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, exactly. It's it, crazy. It, there, there's a sense of, at first glance, <laughs> saying you are under an umbrella right. gives you a form of safety. You're under. You're. But it's like who's protected. in the center of the umbrella and who's at the edges, getting more wet than if they didn't have an umbrella to begin with. Oh my god! Beautiful metaphor. <sighs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so what kind of gay guy is that? <laughs> <laughs> Party promoter. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well. That's interesting. Party promo because they're just like only because it's like, like yes, everyone's like it's a queer party, everyone come, but it's like some people what do you won't look get like? in. Yeah, oh, who do you know? Like oh, that type of thing. Yeah, Where yeah, you yeah. at? Umbrella is exclusive. <laughs> yeah, mm. it's a little like some of you are gonna be outside. That's interesting. Okay, so maybe an umbrella gay is like the guy who like invites like half of a friend group over for gatekeeper. Brunch. Yeah, gatekeeper. Maybe umbrella is gatekeeper. It's like I'm holding the umbrella and I decide who goes under it. <laughs> yeah. But there has to be an element of like the umbrella doesn't work so good. Because <laughs> that's sure. the main thing. Yeah, that's the main thing about umbrellas. Crap. Um, yeah. Should we maybe try to approach it like from the drink? From the umbrella in the drink? Uh, okay, so in terms of... In terms of... Someone who is basically a gatekeeper, like a flop gatekeeper, someone who thinks they're the head of the group. Yeah. Oh, no. Here's what it is. An umbrella gay is someone who is <laughs> always host, always sending partiful <laughs> links, like always hosting parties, always sending partiful links. Close friends. <laughs> Close being friends, like, everything. Guest list. But no one's like that into their events. <laughs> That's interesting. You know what I mean? Yes. And there are people like that, like always having some theme party, 
mm-hmm. always wanting to host the pregame. They have this complex where they think they're the center of the group, but no one else really thinks so. But because no one else is stepping up to be the center, people are like, yeah, I guess we'll go to Jared's <laughs> place. Yeah. <laughs> that just is like one of the saddest things. Like that picture is like bumming me out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, sure. welcome to Umbrella. <laughs> It's not, it's Pop- literally raining outside. It's, literally raining it's not outside. supposed to be pleasant. It's not supposed to be pleasant. <laughs> Welcome to Umbrella. Welcome to Umbrella. I do think on a more literal level too, you know, it's associated with rain. Rain, nah, this is like very, rain is queer in the sense that it's like a different thing that the sky can do. <laughs> 100,000%. And it's rare. <laughs> and it's rare. It's literally like if you add up the days and you're like, what percentage of days are raining? It's yeah. the same exact percentage of people who are queer. It is. It's like, it's a lot, but it's not, it's not. It's, it's way less than most. Yeah, it's yeah. a minority of days. In some places. In some I places. But I wish that we could find a like a way of explaining that's like a blouse is a fem top. Like, sure, you know what sure, I mean? Sure, sure, sure. No, I see. For an umbrella gay, you mean? For an umbrella Damn, gay. Damn, I did all of that and you're like, no, it's like, sexually. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Oh, you want sexually. Well, no! simple, simple. Yeah, simple. simple. Okay, an umbrella is... Um, <laughs> Okay, okay. An umbrella is someone who, um, like, talks about sex a lot, but, like, doesn't have sex mm. very much. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly it. No further questions. QED. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. That came Damn, to me that's in perfect. a vision. <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> it's literally like the entire, it's a bi- it the entire identity. A big game. The entire identity of Umbrella is. <laughs> I protect. Oh, do you want to bring me? It might rain. And you're like, okay, I'll bring you. And then it's like, I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the umbrella is literally like, I'm going to take every fucking drop. Yeah. Like, you're not going to, like. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Nothing yeah. will be left. Yeah, D- don't worry. Yeah. His umbrella. Yeah, the umbrella's like, come like, on, rain on me, rain on me. And then th- this guy does rain, and the umbrella's like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> it's like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I didn't know there'd be wind. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Damn, that's oh, good. that's good. Great. Oh, we wow. did it. Cool. Some umbrellas are gay. Some umbrellas are agree? gay. I agree. Yes, I would say I certainly agree. <laughs> Wow. I was pretty worried about that. Oh, uh, really? I was just like, I'm going to have to stretch it. <laughs> and it did, though. Uh, I think it, I think you pushed us to, to some truths because you were, I think many people, when we start theorizing, are sort of like, sure, girl. And then we like move on. <laughs> yeah. but, you were, but you were being very much like, that's not I'm a full listening. proof. Like right. that, yeah. you, you've yeah. shown your work and it doesn't quite add up. Yeah, Let's totally. keep going. Yeah. And in that sense, you are like the teacher. <laughs> you're like Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. Like you're the the or Dead Poets Society or whatever the fuck. Both. <laughs> Both. Both. I I mean, I that's always what I struggled with is when they were like, okay, so but like write the conclusion. And I was like, you read the whole thing, right? That's <laughs> yeah, it. Right. Because yeah. yeah, it doesn't feel natural yeah. to repeat, but you, you have to. So then I go, in conclusion. But I felt like like my last topics, Christianity and dichotomies, mm-hmm. they were too broad. Mm-hmm. Oh, I you know? see. Yeah. Well, it's so you I wanted something. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I actually think a lot of people and I think I would have this instinct too. A lot of people come onto the podcast and think the most intellectual thing I can do is pick the broadest possible thing. Of is to be like, my topic is, you know, climate change. Right. But in fact, the smaller, I mean, we've talked about this before. Smaller is big and big is small. The smaller <laughs> topic <laughs> is, the more you can dig deep and do more intellectual work. You got to get specific. You got to get with specific what's gay with what's gay and what's straight. And what's yeah. straight. Because, like, legit, some things are not gay and not straight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's really Your hard podcast. when people come on and they say something, and I'm like, to be honest, I think that's gay. Like, oh, their topics. Yeah. yeah. And I'm well, like, I'm trying exactly. to yes and do, but I, like, do fundamentally. Like, I think there's something interesting when it's like, this podcast is completely fake. And then sometimes I'll be like, wait, I but that's not true. Yeah, there are rules. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's not like magic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. It's like fake, but it's like. I, yeah. Sometimes I do wonder if we, <laughs> if we like, from the beginning, we were not that strict about the rules <laughs> uh-huh. in a way that sometimes I'm like, well, don't make a mockery of it. <laughs> like, let's go back and then let's do it again and be like really strict about it. Because in fact, when we get into the zone of critique, mm-hmm. we're dead serious. Yeah. You 100%. have to be. Yeah. 
language is literally the most important thing we have. I mean, what you're describing is like legit theater and plays. It's like, I know that's a guy, but we have to be playing along and yeah. thinking through what is being yes. said. Yeah. Because then yeah. it's like, <sighs> I'm actually bored of what I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Wow. Talk about <laughs> like the opposite that? of Gringer Beans. No, it's like I giving know. up halfway through. That's Miss <laughs> Trinkle Tack. Oh, Miss Trinkle Tack. Trink- trinkle or Wrinkle? Trinkle. Miss Trinkle Tack is Mr. Gringer Beans' flop wife. <laughs> Who's like, he's constantly performing at every dinner party. And <laughs> she's, she's like, like, oh, God. That's too much. Like, somebody's like, what did you do today, Miss Trinkle Tack? And she's like, I, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and then Mr. Gringer Beans is, is next to her sneezing like, oh, <laughs> She's like, it's like, how are you? She's like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that she kept her last name. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it, she's not. She's, she's like, still I'm, not fully in. Yeah. You know? like, I'm not invisible. <laughs> like, yeah, she got married because of family pressure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, also, Mr. Gringer Beans was so wealthy. <laughs> of course. Of course. Hello. <laughs> Talk about Gringer Beans thing is having so much money. <laughs> of course, more than you need. More than you need. Well, when you yeah. Gringer Beans stuff, just talk about using you. Gringer Beans for evil is accumulating wealth. <laughs> Say that. <laughs> oh, Damn. all right. I love that couple. Oh, I love them. I really like. I can They're see nice. Mr. Gringer Beans. You know what I mean? I know. What do he look like to you? <laughs> <laughs> Help me. Well, he's got one of those hats. That's like rounded at the top. To me, it's with a, a Monopoly man, Mr. Well, Monopoly. But it, there's like a yellow tie. <laughs> yeah, and he's like a little bit like like I see him walking to every room and sort of jokingly being like, right. <laughs> you know what it is? Of course. <laughs> yeah, walking Mr. with Mr. Monopoly yellow tie, but stilettos. <laughs> also, <laughs> like, bigger like big pants. <laughs> 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 feather and in the like, cap you, feather. you can't feather in the cap. see why but he, like when he walks it jingles <laughs> so, <laughs> jingle 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 uh, he's top. amazing ruffle blouse oh my god I love him <laughs> I love Damn. him so much. He's so cute. Yeah, he's funny. And he walks with a cane but he doesn't need it Yeah, it's an umbrella. It's an umbrella and he does have an umbrella <sighs> wow. Should we do our final segment? I think we have to Are you stressed? I'm not stressed I mean, I'm stressed something? independently about other things in my life, as you know, that I'm doing after this recording. But nice. current, no, no, I'm certainly not stressed. Don't, well, let that be in the future. I yeah, know, I know. Be God, present. one of the most powerful things is to literally be like, the future doesn't exist yet. And therefore, I can't think about it. I don't have to deal with that now. Yeah. Celeste, normally our final segment is shout outs. But yeah. because we're doing our Pride episode, which is Gadio Lab. Um, our final segment is brand partnerships, mm-hmm. um, and <laughs> in the style of your talk favorite longer, talk longer. LGBTQ plus creators, we want you to partner with anything that you're enjoying yes. around the globe, people, places, things, ideas. Um, just you know, be excited to partner with them. And we're thinking of them on the spot, just for everyone at home. Yeah, we don't know what we're gonna. Do you guys have with. something? I think I can whip something up, but the it will be mind is blank improvised. right now. One My second. mind is completely blank. Um, so George, if you want to go, sure. <clears throat> <laughs> hey guys, I'm George. I'm a comedian, podcaster, and LGBT creator. And this June, I'm partnering with Oxford Shirts. <laughs> Oxford Shirts are the most versatile shirt out there. And they're sort of in this really incredible space between casual and formal. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. And nothing says verse like being a proud LGBTQ American, especially in these times. So next time you're out, whether you're protesting, insert issue here, or just going to your office job, put on an Oxford shirt. They come in white blue, sometimes white and blue stripe in a way that can be really, really cool. And you can wear them no matter what your gender is. And by the way, all genders are valid, just like all shirts are valid, whether they are Oxford or otherwise. And go out there and use promo code George.com. <laughs> oh, I didn't know we were the giving code that. code is a website. Keep going. <laughs> 
to buy an Oxford shirt for your next <laughs> event. And remember, you guys, please go out and vote. That's amazing. Wow. Um, okay. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Sam. I You may have seen me on my podcast, Stradio Lab, um, available now on everywhere you get your podcasts and including YouTube. Woo. And um, I am so excited to announce my partnership with Running Into People at the Airport. <laughs> I think Running Into People at the Airport is one of the most LGBTQ friendly things you can do because, you know, if you're traveling like me, um, you feel so lonely and you feel you're carrying your bags and you're, 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 you're without roots and you say, who am I? And then who is that? Oh, why, that's someone you know. Suddenly you're at home you're feeling chosen family you're feeling like the airport is your childhood home and I just find it so fun and creates this interesting dynamic of sort of a you know what, before midnight after sunset type mm. vibe Absolutely. where you're like uh, do we hang out the whole time do we just talk for a little bit um, are we is this the moment we fall in love and I think um, I'm so excited to partner with running into people into an airport and I think you guys should check it out <laughs> into an airport <laughs> running, <laughs> running into people running you know into running into people you know in an airport <laughs> setting um, and use promo code Slay Malma um, at checkout to say Sam sent you bye <laughs> wow that was really good that was cool. and I actually think that's a beautiful description of what it's like to run into people at the airport. You really got it right. Is it something you've experienced lately? I experienced it, yeah. I ran into um, Marissa Goldman yesterday. I came here yesterday. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's flying off the shelves. Yeah. Hey, guys. Celeste here. Writer. Influencer. <laughs> <laughs> Model and engineer. Oh. Mm. Uh, this Pride, I, I want to talk to you about something that's close to my heart. You know when you're thirsty and hungry? Ugh. Mm -hmm. What I like to do when the feeling strikes is eat fruit. Oh. This Pride, <laughs> fruit is what I'm eating every day. Can you imagine being a caveman and all you've ever eaten is meat and water? <laughs> That would be scary. Coming across something that looks like completely inedible, almost as a rock. Mm. Cracking that open and realizing it's a mango. You would be the happiest person you who has ever lived. You would probably die from the joy of the feeling. That's why this pride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm encouraging you to go buy some fruit. Wow. Wow. When you go to the grocery store now and get fruit, you can also buy every other kind of food. Oh, wow. Use promo code CAVEMANTHIRSTYHUNGRY <laughs> oh, oh. at checkout for 100% off. Oh my God, that's such a good deal. <laughs> that's such a good deal. <laughs> fruit is amazing. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot believe it exists. Wow. And check it out and follow. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. 100% off is so funny. <laughs> there you what go. if every podcast that was like, <laughs> you get free therapy for <laughs> life? I love that. With the promo code, it's free. <sighs> okay. Wow. You know, let me just say this. Yeah. I started this episode not being in the mood for pride. I've never felt more prideful. Oh, my God. I feel so that. ready to go out there and be proudly out. George, and that's be proudly amazing. LGBTQ+. Plus. This is so Gringer I'm going to go to parties. I'm going to be is. so Gringer Beans. I'm going to be mixed Gringer Beans this pride. <laughs> of course. And um, Oh, my God. We mix Emma, mix Emma never came never up came today. Up. No. Are, how are they doing? Um, from them lately? I actually think that's a great question because oh. Mix Emma, when we invented them, yeah. they were a college student. Yes. And that was four years ago. Four, that, that, this is what I mean. Like, Mix oh my Emma God. is literally like out and about. They're and about. an adult. They're an adult. They are, um, you know, probably working at a company of some sort. Do you think it's an ethical company? I mean, this is what I've been. That's why I'm mm. delaying what I'm about to say because I, I don't. 
I'm like, is it? Well, I think it's the job that they got. And maybe that's yeah. not exactly what they w- would like to be doing. Yeah. But that's okay for me right now. Yeah. yeah. And do you think they, like... I feel like they're... They still they're, go by Emma. Huh? <laughs> Oh, do they, they still go by Emma? I'm not sure. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Think, what do you think? I think they, they probably go by chair now. Chair? Wow. You heard it here. Well, you heard it, it wait, here but, first. but they it's not like a dead name, but they prefer chair. Oh, so right. it's not it's, it's like, not it. Okay. It's like, like, like yeah, yeah. Like that's what their friends call them. And like and they're still cool with like Emma M, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. M. But yeah. they do prefer chair. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I just well, let you shout know. out to Chair. And honestly, like <laughs> I do think I would say I have faith that they will land on their feet. Like, yes, so. this is not an ideal job for them, but like, because well, they living, have such a beautiful voice, beautiful yeah. voice. So they're living with two great roommates. Mm-hmm. You know, they've gotten really good at cooking. Really good at cooking. Yes, I mean they've cooked through because you know when we first met them, they were cooking Alice and Roman stew. <laughs> but the, the I think they've beans. moved yeah. through the rest of Alice and Roman books, and yeah. they're doing cold carrot cake. But you know what is happening now? Actually, they are now vegan. They weren't oh, vegan. Oh, yeah. good, good for them. Yeah. yeah, and it's because of the um, their their an ethical disagreement having to do with humans, not with animals. Exactly. They don't give a shit about animals. No, no. But they heard about the kinds of diseases migrants yeah, can get. Yeah, they're they're a sort of a. What's it called when you always think you're sick? <laughs> they made them really upset. They're hypochondriac. Hypochondriac. <laughs> wow. Which actually falls under the LGBTQ plus umbrella. 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 But they're on the very, very edge. They're getting and constantly getting poisoned by acid rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But they're good. They're good. Totally. They're doing well. they're good. Totally. And they're in love. You know? Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's right. That's yeah, they're in love. Saying. It's cool. With a photographer. With a photographer. A, a really good photographer, really good actually. Photographer. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. They just did a spread for Paper Magazine. Yes. <laughs> of Emma Chamberlain. <laughs> yes, Emma Chamberlain. <laughs> and it ha- was sort of caveman themed. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> Emma Chamberlain yeah. is the new Mix, mix Emma. Emma. Now that the Ooh. old Mix Emma is chair. <laughs> That's what they related about. <laughs> That's what they related about. Because like M- Mix chair doesn't have shame about changing their no, name. No, not at all. So they were like, I, my name was actually name Emma was, for many years. Yeah. And Emma Chamberlain was like, oh, my God. That You're, is so crazy. I love your vibe. Do you want a selfie? <laughs> oh. Wow. wow. Well, what a beautiful note to end on. Yeah, what a lovely. That was like catching up with a college friend. Yeah. It was. <laughs> and it's by good the way, to hear. that's Straight yeah. Out Lab Deep Lore. And I think we're, <laughs> we're not going to explain. If you haven't listened to literally episode if you three, know, three you or know. something. If you know, you know. And, if you think uh, you can't do that, we can, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, read it. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read it. I just said it. Well, Celeste, oh, happy, pride. It. happy pride. Happy pride to all. Happy pride to all the glamour girls out there. Happy pride to Chair. Happy pride to Emma Chamberlain. Mm-hmm. And uh, happy Mr. pride to Mr. Mr. Gringer, Gringer Boobs. Boobs. <laughs> Gringo Beans, sorry. Mr. Gringer Beans. And, and Mrs. His wife. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Trink- Trinkle Toss. Trink- Trinkertack. Trinkertack? Trinkle Tack. Trink- Trinkle Tack. <laughs> Trinkle Tack. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, it is so like her to have people forget her name. I know. <laughs> well, she could help us a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It is sort of not to victim blame, but she right. could live out loud a little more. I agree. <laughs> um, okay. Right. Bye. Bye. I love you. <laughs>